Greetings, ladies and mental gents, and I'm still in darkness, but I'm still going to read to you Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. Anyways, if you'd like to click that like button, it would be very much appreciated. Also, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. And also, again, I think pop a little light emoji down below in the comment section to brighten up my day. Anyways, on to the story. What's a Dreadnought? Written by Drifty241. A series of detonations engulfed the view from the bridge of my cruiser and burned a streak across the stellar horizon. Smoldering hulks drifted through the vacuum. Their crews faded to freeze over in the void, forgotten to time. Salvage and corpses were all that was left in the wake of this brutal railgun bombardment. There was a serenity in the battle, however. Humankind was on its last legs. My fleet had pushed him all the way to the small dwarf planet of Pluto where they were now in the process of making a hopeless last stand. Suddenly, my monitor flashed to life. The incoming transmission? It's read in turquoise lettering. Accept or deny? Confused, I answered the call. The pixels shifted to an adult human. His hairs grayed and his skin wrinkled. Greetings. My name is Commodore Duncan Blade, and I represent the Stellar Fleet Command. We are willing to accept your unconditional surrender. The human face was stoic, his voice deep and dry. My blood boiled at the dirty trick. How dare they insult the Grand Admiral of the Imperial Navy? A strong predator would never bow to weak prey, no less to a lowly Commodore. What is the meaning of this? I yelled, enthralled by the tendrils of rage. I am aware that your species is honor-bound. However, we have a dreadnought en route. This is your only chance to surrender. The man's flat face remained calm, as if he couldn't care less about my question. What is a dreadnought? The name means fear nothing, and it will give you something to fear. I thought better of your intelligence agencies. Scare tactics didn't work against the Zaptan species. Okay, then. We warned you. If you're lucky, you'll get a second chance. With that, the transmission cut out abruptly. The battle continued as we pushed the human destroyers back, until they retreated in good order to Charon. There was a solemn silence on the bridge, barring the hum of electronics. That was until my radar operator screamed in panic, Sir, br breach echoes at ten o'clock, the, the biggest I've ever seen. Then it happened. A rift in space-time clawed its way into existence, orange light shining through, the gateway expanded to the largest size that I'd ever seen until a giant warship at 1.2 kilometers long emerged. From its position to my left, I noticed a gaping maw of weaponry, including a railgun with a barrel so big some of our smaller ships could squeeze inside. A marvel of engineering, capable of biblical annihilation. Another transmission popped up on my screen. I didn't need any convincing to accept it in earnest. Do you change your mind? Questioned the Commodore Blade smugly. Yes, please spare us. You're in luck. I'm detaching marines to commandeer your vessels. Do not resist. One year later, by security lunar prison. Hello, Grand Admiral Septon, jeered Commodore Blade smugly. One year ago, you said that your species would not fall for scare tactics. You were wrong. In what way? You had the biggest ship in the galaxy, and I was staring down its barrel. Of course I would surrender, I shouted back at the unfazed human. The ship wasn't real. It was a metal shell made of melted scrap and powered by recycled engines. It had no weaponry or crew. A sense of relief seemed to wash over his face, like he had released a burden from his shoulders. You're lying. We detected 50,000 life signatures. They were little more than mice in breathable boxes. With that, the Commodore showed the schematic of the Dreadnought. I analyzed it, and sure enough, he hadn't once lied. The lumbering steel beast was a hollow behemoth with only equipment to keep the engines running and compartments for the rodents. My face went red with a deep breath. I'd lost my species, the war, and the pride of its navy. Over a metal box. Where is your honor? I yelled. All warfare is based on deception, he replied coldly. Only now that I see the massive flaws in my culture. End of story. Story number two. The Gift of Mercy, written by Pfizer Moop. It'll be up to the historians to decide when the sanction had failed. 
It'll be them who will spend years arguing over abstract topics, such as leadership or misguided hubris, down to the very singular decision. But for me, it is as clear as the light of Ashun. I was there when we sieged the world of Baraxas, you know. A simple world of a simple people. Misguided, if you ask me. Misguided for refusing our invitation into the Grand Realm. For what they lacked in means of technology or strength of arms, they were people rich in pride and spirit. That much cannot be refused. The occupation drained manpower, soldiers that were needed elsewhere, and the realm grew tired of losing its young to such a quarrelsome world. An edict of pacification was issued by the Senate, and we were sent to carry out this order. An armada of conquest rerouted to police insurgents. When we made our arrival and relieved the garrisons, the first step, as always, was culling. War is about mathematics. Even though we were many, there were way more of them. So naturally, we had to reduce their numbers. Healthcare had to be halted. Nourishment was either burned or brought off the planet. We had to make our intentions clear, and why waste ammo when you can punish them so much easier? Get away. It is a mercy. Rather than taking their lives, we were allowing them to pick their sacrifices. Who would starve or perish who was not decided by us? Merely that they had to. But who? That was on them. It would allow the weak or the old to make the honorable sacrifice for the strong and the young. And we only needed the strong and the young. The realm needed to finally reap the benefits of this world and cut its losses. Of course, many still do not understand the mercy that is our way of war. They argue and petition, they always do. The weak do not understand the honor and mercy of the strong. It is on us to educate them and future generations they will see the gift that we granted, how magnanimous we were. They always do, after time, after we teach them. But this time, it was different. At first, it was a nuisance, but what would have been a simple campaign merely estimated to last a decade for its initial step. It was sabotaged. People with white cloth adorned with symbols of red made it through the blockade. They were collaborators, supporters of the resistance, enemies of the realm, but they were not of Barax's origin. They were of another race of lesser beings. Humans, they called themselves. Ignorant, they were. But we were not barbarians. We bring civilization. We enlighten the universe, not darken it. So who were we to punish the foolish? We did not, for clemency is virtue. How could this child know without the father telling it? So we told the humans to refrain from their actions. We lectured them on the ways of the universe, and shared our wisdom. It was not their place to be. They had no right. But yet again, we were reminded of how primitive a people they were. Their so-called ambassadors told us that these were private citizens, private organizations, nothing they could exercise their will upon. Weakness in disorder was portrayed as a strength, as if it was normal. Humanitarian, they called it. Whatever that meant. Such chaos cannot be tolerated. We could not tolerate it. If they could not stop their own people, it was on us to do it for them. No. I was amongst those who were sent onto Baraxas. I was there to make an example, to show them the errors of their ways, the consequences. And we made sure that they would all witness it, for it was a message that needed to be delivered, eloquent, to be understood. Let me tell you, I took no pleasure in what was necessary, but when a child refuses his father, a strong hand is not just necessary, it is inevitable. Such is the gift that we are giving. It was easy to find them, the people of the white and red. They proudly displayed their heraldry as if to invoke our anger in their defiance. As we went among them, they were weak and frail creatures, crying and weeping as we ended their lives. Refusing passage where we sought entry into the walls which granted refuge to hundreds and thousands of natives, misguided by the idea that they could halt our advance. Where we could, we granted an easy death, cleansed their bodies in the fire of our launches, and absolved their sins in the light of a shun. Where they fought back with simple tools, we responded in the warrior's way, answering with honor. 
even if on the wrong path, with equal honor. He who fights deserves to be fought without all restraint. All of this we carefully captured, for it was priceless. We would have liked to avoid the death of so many. But on the other hand, it would allow us to create a lesson that would be cherished by the humans for generations to come. Would certainly assist them in avoiding such foolish mistakes in the future. In a way, it was saving lives. So, when it was done, we sent an honor guard to deliver the gift wrapped in their cloth of white and red, recovered from the field, to be presented in their grand assembly, and at first, we were glad, for they were all able to understand the magnificence of the gift that we'd made. With solemn gratitude, they watched the great lecture, but we overestimated them. When it was over, they started rambling and shouting that the lesser races enjoy so much, but we left. Our task had been taken care of, and now it was on the child to reflect on the meaning of this lesson. We gave them time, continued our operation over Baraxis, and even managed to reach a quota again, and that is where it changed. Where it did not fall in line as it did countless times before, the humans were incapable of enlightenment. They refused the knowledge of their elders and cast it away. Instead, they returned to their most primitive and barbaric ways, they embraced their inner animals and became the very demons we swore to banish from this universe by the means of our benevolence. Our leniency had allowed them to grow like a festering abscess. Ships of black and steel poured out of their system. Their soldiers were fury incarnate and the grand realm was losing. We had not lost for thousands of years. We watched as a child reaches out and strikes the open hand. We will close it and become a gauntlet to restore order. Of that, I am certain. The realm will recover. It has to, for it is grand. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps, Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomer Waffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azrakal. Thank you very much.